Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in um, that image. So again, I'll do file new. Nope, I wanna bring in the image. So I'm bringing file place embedded. I'm gonna grab the bricks photo. Drop that one in. I'm gonna hit the checkbox. Um, like I said, my computer's running a little slow, so I'm actually gonna save this. Go ahead and save the document just to make sure, just in case it decides to die, I'll still have my stuff. So I'm gonna save as. Then I'm gonna choose Movember. Notice it's already saved for us. But since this is a, a, a second time I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna say Movember underscore poster and save. Of course that dialog box comes up, we say okay, and it is saving. We can see it saving up at the top. So now I'm gonna bring in another one. I'm gonna do a file, place embedded. I'm gonna place that mountains background. Um, so I'm gonna commit to that. You guys have to commit. Not some of you have problems with that, but we're okay. All right, so I'm gonna save that. Notice it's saving, so you can always see the progress. Like I said, mine is going a little slow, but that's all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and place my third image, which is going to be Mr. Beardman. So I'll place him. Okay, I'm gonna commit to that. Hit save. And it's saving for us. And the last image that we're gonna bring in um, should be our palm tree. So I'm gonna choose place embedded. Um, let me see which one that one was. I think it's this one. If you're on a Mac and you want to check which one it is, if you hold the space bar, it'll show you a an image of which one. If you're on a PC, um, I think the thumbnails themselves should expand, so you should be able to see that. So I'm going to hit enter, save that. And we talk about layer management. Layer management is very important when we're talking about Photoshop, so... As you can see our layers over here, the tree, I'm gonna go ahead and name that one by double clicking on the name in the layers panel. And I'm gonna call that palm tree. I'm gonna click on the man, let's double click, let's uh, name him. I'm gonna name him um, beard guy, because my name is unique and that's just awesome. For the mountain, we're gonna name that one. I'm just gonna name it mountains. And last, the bricks is already named for us, which is cool, making sure I'm saving. So if you're on a PC, that's Control S. If you're on a Mac, that is Command S. All right, so I'm gonna hide some of these because I'm not ready to use them yet. Really, the only, I'm, gonna also, I'm also gonna hide the background. We're probably gonna delete that one later on. But the only two that I'm really concerned with are the bricks and the mountains. Now notice, if I hit Command T, um, I have the mountain layer selected, right? So with the mountain layer selected, that is the only one that I can affect right now. So I'm going to hold Option and Command and pull this out because I want it. And remember, I'm only dragging in the corner. So either the bottom or top, left or right corner. And that is it. Because if I drag in the center, I'm going to distort the photo. And that is not what I'm about right now. All right. So I pulled this out. I pulled it just a half of an inch or a hair of an inch. Um past uh, its boundary just a little bit. I'm gonna hit enter. So I have the mountains where I want them. I wanna do the same thing with the bricks. So notice I can't see the bricks right now, so I have to hide mountains so that I can see it. And the bricks layer is selected. I'm gonna hit control T just so that I can bring this layer out, grab it by the edges, and I'm gonna pull it out just a bit. And like I said, just a hair pass. I'm gonna hit enter. All right, so now we have the mountains and the bricks. And so the goal is, I actually want the mountains to be on the bottom and the bricks to be on the top, but it really doesn't matter what order they're in. It's just an anal thing. So I'm going to put the mountains down at the bottom and then I have the bricks on top. So what I'm trying to do is I know that I want to expose the mountains. I want this to be like a collage for them to both look like they're a part of the same background. But I can't see the mountains right now, but I need both of them to be selected. So what I'm going to do is select the brick layer. I'm going to turn down the opacity just a little bit so that I can see. So right now, see how I can see the mountains coming through? So I'm in the layers panel. I turn down the opacity. I turn it down to about, let's say, 49%. Uh, 
Um, and you guys can use whatever judgment you guys want for that. But I am going to return that opacity later on. This is just so that I can see what's happening. So I'm going to make sure that the, bricks la the brick layer is selected. And I want to mask out the parts of the brick layer so that I can see this mountain. Okay, so what I'm going to do is with the brick layer selected, when we were in class, I had us doing this with, um, um, with the gradient tool, but we're going to actually do this with the mask in this tutorial. So what I'm going to do now is click on the mask to create a mask. Notice we see nothing happening. That's because it's white and white reveals all, right? We want to conceal it, so we need to paint with the opposite color. The contrast of white is always black, so we want to do that with black. So let's go over here in our tools panel. Let's click on this reverse so that we have black showing. And what we're going to do now is we want to go and grab a brush. So I'm heading to the brush, or you can hit B, that's a shortcut. And we want to make sure that we have a soft brush. Okay, so the default brush is this 250 brush that's right here, and I'm good with that. I'm good with that for now, but just notice you have other brushes that you can use um, and work with as well. I want to make sure that the brush is large enough, so I'm going to make it larger by clicking on the right bracket key, which is next to the P. Next to the P is the left and right bracket, one the right bracket key, and I'm just going to start um, uh, erasing or, just, ah, bad word, masking some of this mountain out so that we can see um, what's happening. So I'm just going to mask it out and I'm doing a very rough mask so it's not going to be perfect and that's okay. I'm okay with that. So I'm just masking it out a little bit. And now I'm at the point to where I can actually bring some of that, um, some of my uh, brick back. I can bring the opacity back. But what I want to do real quick so I'm going to hit X. Now, so remember, the key to swap these swatches, the foreground and the background, is the X key. So what I'm going to do is I actually want to bring some of this top. I'm going to paint over the top. And you're like, oh my gosh, but we just painted that out. Why do we want to do that? And I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. So I'm masking that back in. I'm going to hit X again. I'm going to go to the... Uh, brick layer and I'm going to bring that opacity back up to 100% so that now I can see what's happening. All right, now I want to make sure I click on the mask and if we look at the mask we can see what we've masked out by seeing like the black areas and stuff. I even see some areas that I missed over here in this corner and that corner but I'll fix those. As a matter of fact I'll fix them now. So I'm going to hit X and sorry, I'm not going to hit X. I'm going to paint back in those areas so that I can have them at full opacity. All right, so now that I have that, I'm going to switch back to X, and I'm going to change my opacity up here. Now, these up here changes the opacity of the tool. So I'm going to change the opacity of the tool to about, say, uh, 40%. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to hit X, okay? And what I want to do now is so that I don't have the full or sharp edge of the mask, I'm going to paint over the top areas just so that, the mask is slightly, or the mountains are slightly showing through um, the background. Okay, so I'm just painting this back, pull it up here. And notice, so I went one pass with my mouse. If I go again, I'm adding another pass to the mouse. So I just want the mountains just to come through just a little bit, but I also want to see the background of those bricks. Isn't that cool? I'm telling you, masking is awesome because Photoshop's pretty awesome. It's a pretty cool program, you know? All right, so I'm moving this over and out here. Okay. And it's not perfect. It is, um, it's, but this is where we are for now. So now we have these two backgrounds blended almost seamlessly, which is pretty cool. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to bring in our, well, we already have him in, but we're going to sort of start setting up for our guy to come in. And as I'm looking at this, remember I told you I try not to be a perfectionist when I'm teaching, but sometimes it just comes out. All right, so I'm good. I'm letting it go. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to bring the beard guy in. So there's our beard guy. I'm going to select him. And what we're going to do is get rid of this background. And, of course, you know the keyword to doing that, right? Masking it out. Yes, but before we mask it out, we are going to select certain areas of the image with the 
magic wand. So let's go ahead and get our magic wand tool and we'll click on the background and now we're like, oh my gosh, what is happening? It is grabbing everything. All right, so I'm going to change my tolerance to 32 and try to grab the areas. Now, we talked about certain tools in class. We talked about the uh, quick select tool. I could easily go in with the quick select tool and grab these areas. If I wanted to, I could go in with um, um, other tools as well. But what we're gonna do in this case is it looks like we're gonna uncheck contiguous and we're gonna select this area and notice it didn't get this area. What's kind of cool about this though, just to show you, is it always depends on where we click because each pixel is a different color. So if I click over here, then it's gonna grab a different area. If I click over here, then it grabs the whole thing. And you're like, how in the world? Yep, that is just how it works. It's crazy, I know, I get it. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we want to select the inverse of this um, because if I go ahead and I mask it now, which we'll test it of course, but if I mask it now, I'm gonna bring my layers up a little bit. And if I mask it now, it takes the guy out and that's the opposite of what we want, total opposite. So I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna go to select, select the inverse. So if you ever do that and you're realizing it's taking the wrong part, remember, just select that inverse, make that work for you. All right, so we're gonna select the inverse of that, then we're gonna mask it out and now we have just this young man, which is what we want. There's a white halo around it, as you notice, and usually I would go in and I would mask that out, but we're not gonna mask that out for now um, because this will work for us. So we're gonna do now, let me go ahead and expand this out just a little bit, is we wanna place him into place. So I'm gonna kick him, put him in this corner, and then we're gonna hit Control T, and we're gonna move it down some to where we can get it right here. Kind of want him up in the mountains just a little bit. And I'm hit enter. All right, so now we have this young man and um, and he's masked out how we want it. So what we need to do now is we need to put a blend mode on him. So in our layers panel, we can play with blends. We can multiply him, right, in with the background. And we hit multiply, he's kind of multiplied in the background. And this is the exact effect that we want. Notice how like the trees are coming through and we have um, trees coming through here. So it kind of just looks like he blends in with the mountain. If you feel it's too much, you can also taper back on that opacity if you like, but I'm cool with it. So now I'm gonna select the mask because as I look in the mask, I see this white line up at the top, which is telling me that I didn't get everything. So I'm gonna get the brush tool and I'm gonna try to see if I can minimize that white line some and get in there, get in there and make it smaller. Of course, that's with the left and right bracket keys. You guys already know how to use. And let's see how we can get this down some. All right, so we're getting there, we're getting there. I'm gonna let it go, but we're getting there. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do uh, my opacity is at 40. So let me go ahead and change that back to 100. So whenever you change the opacity of the tools, you got to remember to go back if you're trying to do stuff, especially in the case of me trying to get rid of stuff around my dude here. All right. So the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to let it go, is um, we can put a filter. Remember how we were working with um, the different filters? So a filter that we worked with in class was a different one. I'm gonna work, go with the adjustment layer. I'm saying filters, adjustment layer. And the adjustment layer that I'm gonna use is curves for this one. So you have many adjustment layers down there as you guys seen, but um, I'm gonna use curves. And curves is one that people are afraid of. Don't be afraid of it. Only way, it, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna click a dot in the middle and notice now I'm doing it, but it's affecting my whole photo. And that is not what I want at all. And you guys already know, that means that we have to clip this. So to clip, I'm holding Alt. I'm holding my cursor right in between the curves and the beard guy. So now I just clipped the curves layer into the beard guy um, by himself. And now the background is untouched. So now when I go and I play with the filters, I can go up and notice and I can go down and I can play with this. I can make him kind of disappear in the background a little bit. It's a really cool filter to play with. Don't be afraid of it, just play. So I'm gonna move this up and I can get it more dramatic um, or him with a more dramatic face. 
or I can go here. I'm pretty cool with about there. All right, and just to see the effect, we can turn the eye off and on, and you'll see that it is darkening him a little bit and causing um, a little bit of drama uh, to the photo. All right, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to bring that tree, and we're going to make it a brush. Since we worked with brushes last class, there's the palm tree, um, and there's a brush. So what I'm going to do is let's select this palm tree, all right? So I'm going to click on the magic wand. I'm going to just select in the area of color that I know has the biggest difference, and we see that we've selected the tree, right? So now with the tree selected, I don't want that part. So I'm going to hit Q, which is the quick mask mode. Oh yeah, I'm going to click on the brush, and then I'm just going to paint out that area because I already have black, right? And remember with quick mask, it, it selects by selection, okay? So now if I hit Q again, Notice I got that area that I didn't want. It is out of there. And I don't want this area either. So I'm going to go ahead and get that out. Okay. And I like going back and forth. This is why this is one of my favorite uh, tools to use is that Q key. All right. So now I have it perfect or as perfect as it's going to get. So what I want to do now is I'm going to make sure that I have that one selected. And I want to make a brush of this kind of cool we're going to go up to edit now in class we did the brush by a shape but i'm going to show you another way we're going to make this brush let's go edit and then let's go to define brush preset and the brush name comes over here i'm going to call it palm trees with an s i'm going to hit okay and then I'm going to keep the brush here. I'm going to keep it uh, selected. So what I'm going to do now is just make a mask. And the reason I'm making that mask is so that if I ever need to select this brush again, I can. Another thing you can do is if you hold Option and you click over in the, I'm uh, sorry, Command, and you click over in the mask, you can always reselect it. So that's why I want to do that. So I'm going to hit Control D to deselect this. And I'm going to hide this layer. Now, as you notice, with the brush key depressed, I cannot do anything on here because we need to see I have this non-smoking sign. Now, what I need to do is I have, I have to have a new layer. So I'm going to click on new layer. And I can choose whatever color I want. So I like this dark color um, that I have selected. But just for purposes of the video, I'm going to try to choose another color. Um, from the image itself. So maybe I want to take this black from his beard. Maybe I want that color to work. Okay, and the color picker shows up. I told you I'm working on two screens, so I'm sorry it's going to another screen. And I hit OK. And then once I click in this new layer, I'm going to make the brush smaller though. I make it smaller by those same keys that we've been using before, which are the left and right bracket keys. I'm going to make it just a little smaller. Because what I want to happen is I want it to go into this area right here. Actually, I want it big. I want it bigger. But I want it to go in this area right here. So, because notice that area is just pretty much just the light area. I want to darken it just a little bit. So I'm going to put the brush there. So I'm going to hit click one time. And note, there's our tree. You see that? Is that not cool? I'm telling you. This is cool stuff. All right. So I have the brush here. I'm going to call it um, palm tree brush. Okay. So I have the brush here, palm tree brush. I'm going to click on the move tool. And so the last thing that we have to do to this is we have to go ahead and add some text. We have to add an effect. And we will have done everything that we learned in class this week. What? Also, if we want to take this brush and maybe it's too strong and maybe you want to play with a filter or give it a different blend mode, you can. You can give it like a soft light, um, which makes it a little lighter, or you can give it like a uh, vivid light, or you can just play. I, these filters are amazing and they do amazing things. Don't be afraid to play with them. Play with them and... Uh, these different things with your filter. So you can do a hue where you can change the color. You can do luminosity where it kind of works on the luminance of the photo. Notice how I did luminosity and it's giving you like those browns and the reds um, that are in this photo. I kind of like that effect. So I'm going to chill with that one. All right, so next thing we're going to do, we got to grab this type tool. 
You'll want to find a type that is thick. For me, I'm doing Enzo Sans Uber. And if you guys are working with CC, that font is in type kit. So I'm going to click just to set my type. And I'm going to type Movember. Okay. With Movember typed, I'm going to move it down some. And maybe I want it to be like right here. I kind of want it to go over the guy a little bit. I also want the explanation mark in there. So to edit the type, if you double click on the type tool inside of the layers panel, that's going to make your life uber happy. All right, so I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to choose the eyedropper tool. The eyedropper tool allows us to sample color. So I'm used to just choosing eye. Now I got to find the tool. See how this works? I'll tell you. Let me see. I'm just going to choose eye. All right, so there's an eye for the eyedropper tools right down here. It's the six tool down. Here's your eyedropper. And I'm going to select one of these blues that are, I want a dark blue. So I have to find a nice spot in here. And you can also adjust the color once you select one as well. So I'm going to choose that color for Movember. I'm going to switch it to background only because when I click on type, sometimes it'll take over that color. All right, and I'm going to choose this as the color. And all I did was swap it, and now so Movember is showing me that color. So the last thing that I want to do is I'm going to add an effect to this. So with the Movember layer selected, I'm going to go down to Effects. I'm going to choose Drop Shadow. So many things you can do. This dialog box pops up, and I'm going to choose to have the background normal. Notice it has the same settings that I had before, so yours are going to be different. But I chose the blend mode. The way I chose the blend mode was I clicked on it, and then I selected a blue from the background so right now when i change it it's gonna be a little lighter or a little darker but i'm gonna select the blue and all i'm doing is going out in my picture and just finding some blue that i think i'm gonna like so i chose that one i chose the opacity i made it at 100 percent i also made the blend mode normal the angle is 90 percent i chose to use global lighting which means the lighting is going to be it's going to follow the same lighting as the other layers in the photo which is pretty important the distance I changed to 21, uh, the spread 44, and the size to 54. I also went down here to the contour, and I changed it to the ring contour, which is one of my favorites. But you have the double ring, but you have all sorts of um, ones that you can play with down here. So I encourage you guys to play. And then I added just a little bit of noise of 15, so that it's not so perfect. But remember, you have other options in here. If I wanted to bevel and emboss it, I could. And so notice I checked it and it's giving me the default bevel and emboss. If I want to change the bevel and emboss or the settings, all I do is click on it and then I'll get these settings um, that'll show up over here. But for now, really all I want is that um, drop shadow and I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna choose okay. And so now I have my brush, I have my layers managed. I noticed something with Movember though. Let me go ahead and switch that, fix that real quick. Uh, in the naming. Okay, so I have my brush set. I have my palm tree. I have the palm tree brush I'm no longer using this image. So really at this point I can delete it because we don't want unwanted um, Layers in there in the background. I can go ahead and delete um, I have all of our effects that we used in class The only thing that we didn't do in this one which we can do at any point is do an adjustment layer, which would actually we did. We did a curves adjustment layer. But in class, we were doing like the gradient adjustment layers and things like that. But do play with the layers and stuff. Just like, for instance, if let's say I want to put an adjustment layer on this whole thing that I didn't want clipped, all I have to do is click on adjustment layer. And then let's say I choose uh, hue and saturation. Well, now hue and saturation is all the way at the top. So that means it's going to affect every layer in here. And let's say you were like, uh, I want to colorize this. And then you colorize it. Notice now it's colorized to one color. It's just looking at the different luminance um, in the photo to make that color. And let's say I wanted to make it pink. I don't know. Why would I choose pink? Who knows? But just know that you can do this and give a dramatic effect. So please play with the layers. Play with the adjustment layers. Play with the effects. You guys are not limited. Photoshop is an amazing program and there's so much you can do. When you can't break it, you can alter your photo um, by different ways, but you can't break it. So if I uncheck colorize and I just play with um, some of the stuff, I can do that too. But look at that. Look at how dramatic that is and how the cool, you know, how it's changing and how the colors are popping. So much stuff you can do with it. Please play and enjoy. This is a wonderful program. All right. So 
that is your lesson of the day. I am happy to teach. Known as Andrea, and I'm out. I'll see you guys Tuesday. Have fun with your posters.